Hey everybody, it's Sam with Pro Wrestling Overtime. Yes, that's right, I am back. Now, I know I have to leave every, I don't know, couple weeks, couple months, couple years. Why? Because I just get tired. Tired of talking to you? No. Tired of talking to wrestlers? No. Tired of talking to sources? No. Just tired of the wrestling community overall. Especially the internet wrestling community. See, probably all summer, if you listen to any amount of wrestling podcasts, you follow along on wrestling Twitter, heck, even if you go to like Reddit or somewhere, you've got to be prepared for internet wrestling fans to be fighting over some craziness. And they're being led by guys that have their own podcasts or their own websites or their own Patreons or all of the above. And every once in a while, I just get tired of it. I have to dip out and kind of get out in the real world. And really enjoy myself. And that's kind of what's been happening on and off this summer. But with Labor Day weekend just now over, it's time to come back. And before I've come back full force, I just want to tell you guys that that listen to people like Dave Metzler, uh, Brad Shepler, uh, Andrew Zarian. Billy Body, uh, Zero News, um, Sean Rothsap, all of them, guys, fans, it's not the Bloods versus the Cribs. Some of these guys, when you see them backstage getting ready for the media scrum, you see them out. They're having dinner with each other. They're talking to each other because they actually get along. It's you fans that take their words to extreme and are like, I believe this because they have sources and their proven record and I believe that because of da-da-da-da-da. Guys! This is not the Bloods versus the Crips. And honestly, I can't discredit what different aspect they bring. Some of these guys are genuine experts in wrestling. Now, maybe they don't have expert views, but honestly, Dave Bessler has basically created this whole genre of a newsletter, of a wrestling website, of wrestling podcasts, of creating your own subscriber base over the last, what, 40 years? He is a wrestling historian that likes to take a historical kind of a look back approach. He tells you what he's hearing from the people he's talking to. And sometimes you have to step back and say, who is he talking to? And I think that was brought up really loud and clear in the AEW press scrum by CM Punk. He never said 
Dave Metzler, you're completely, utterly wrong. What he said was, you're listening to people who have their own agenda, who have their own perspective, and you're reporting that as fact without talking to me, without talking to the other side, getting their perspective, and then you taking a step back and reporting both sides and kind of maybe making a judgment based on that. But I can't discredit Dave Metzler. A lot of you want to say, oh, he's wrong about this, he's wrong about that, he's wrong. Yeah. Okay. So, he may be wrong about WrestleMania. I don't go to Dave Metzler for spoilers on WrestleMania. I go to Dave Metzler for him being able to tell me what it was like in the 90s for attendance compared to what it is now. For him to give me the aspect of what was a four-star match in the 90s compared to what a four-star match may have been in the mid-2000s. I go to him when I want to know what has happened. And I mean that by... If I'm looking back on something that happened in 2012, Dave Metzler and Jim Cornette and, to a point, Vince Russo, guys like that who have taken notes or who have wrote it down, Dave Metzler has his Wrestling Observer archives that are so detailed. If you guys have never read a Wrestling Observer newsletter or articles about a week that was, I really encourage you to do that. But do I want Dave Metzler's opinion on what a wrestling fan thought in 2015? No. But I do turn to Billy Body who has an encyclopedia knowledge of what the third match of, you know, 1998 WrestleMania was, or what he was feeling about wrestling in 2003 compared to what he's feeling about wrestling now. Billy Buddy, yes, he gives certain spoilers, or certain things that his sources give him. But again, who is he talking to? A lot of people make the assumption that he's talking to wrestlers. Now, does he? Yes. Drew McIntyre is one of his good friends. However, when you listen to what he's telling you as far as spoilers and stuff, He's not giving Drew McIntyre's views. I found that Billy doesn't really do that. His sources, his information, he has said numerous times, comes from people he has met through his travels or through their travels to England and kind of sparked up a friendship And these are people who may be in the crew, um, in production, in the travel department, in the marketing department. And they met him through his betting knowledge. These are people that want Billy's knowledge of sports betting to win them money and as payment or reward or as a favor or just in a friendship, Billy can say, well, what's going on with such and such? And the marketing guy may say, oh, we made a new shirt. We're going to be plugging this because he's coming back and for the first month he's going to be back. 
you know, we're going all out on this, 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 this. And so Billy tells us he's not getting a wrestling perspective from a wrestler. If you want that, turn to someone like Sean Rousset who is talking to the wrestlers. He's putting it on his site that he's talking to the wrestlers. You're seeing him do those interviews. But he's also playing the game. Him and and Wade Johnson are a PW insider, are kissing up to the different promotions, putting out what they want them to put out to you fans in order to get access to these people. See, the WWE has always, and this includes, you know, Triple H's reign so far, you follow our agenda, you put out the information we want you to put out, we'll give you access for you to do interviews on your show. So, we want you to put out that um, Sasha and Naomi walked out, how unprofessional they are, and by you putting out kind of our slant on that, you can now interview Roman Reigns. You can now have a 15-minute interview with Liv Morgan. And so that's kind of what you've got to know and realize. Andrew Azarian, been totally up front with you. But I think people don't really listen. Andrew Azarian has sources in kind of the media part. He's giving you views of what the USA Network is talking about, or Fox, or other networks. What they're thinking, or what they're seeing, what they're wanting. And so, when he came out with WWE is talking about going, you know, 14 and over, going back to a more lenient view on what can be said and things like that, people went wild and kind of went overboard. Oh, they're going back to the attitude there. You know, they're they're going to be saying who knows what, and, and we're going to get less women's wrestling, and we're going to go back to the bra and panty matches, and guys are going to be saying suck it, and no, no, no. That was... Nothing, nothing Andrew Zarian said was anything like that. He was giving you that a memo had been released or passed around, and he had been made aware of it, that they were going to slowly, possibly be adding some things in that may make them TV-14. And it wasn't supposed to be this overnight change. It wasn't going to be in your face. It was just going to be, like I said, more lenient on some of the words maybe they said. Or being able to push the line or the edge on how far a storyline may go. Especially in the later hours of their program. Are you going to get a 8 o'clock bra and panties match where Roman Reigns is out there saying suck it and flipping off the camera at 8 p.m. on Fox? No. So for the internet community to think that was complete and total craziness. And they want to say, well, Zarian was proven wrong. 
Well, no, he wasn't. Because, see, guys, TV 14 in this day and age is what WWE is doing right now. It is not going up to R-rated or X-rated or NC-17 rated, which is what you guys or at least some of you fans, want them to do. Guys, they're not doing that. And I wish a lot of these guys, you're never going to get it from, like, Steve Carrier at Ringside News. I'm sorry, you're just not. But a lot of these guys need to promote each other. And I think you saw that with Billy Body agreeing to go on Brad Shepard after the whole SummerSlam debacle between him and Sean Ross Sapp, these two basically said on that podcast, we agree to disagree about certain views, but other parts of our views or other parts of our vision of the future of wrestling and where we'd like to see it go are pretty similar. And so, you know, you're going to hear Brad Shepard go on Billy Body's show as kind of a favor for Billy Body coming on his. This should not be, um, well, thou shall not be named said no, guys, let's get along. And what they're doing by turning new fans against one another just because you listen to a certain show or you believe a certain one of these podcasters or one of these websites uh, owners saying is they're robbing you of good info, good understanding of maybe what is going on in the business of wrestling overall just because they want to put each other down or they want you to put them down or you to put their fans down. And guys, I've met a lot of these guys and I am very thankful that I didn't write them off because there's some 0.0001% of you that have told me about them on Twitter. Guys, you know, some of these people are complete and utter assholes on Twitter. That is just, like I said, 0.0.0000001% of who they are. A lot of them have said, I act like this in order to get views, in order to stir things up, get you either mad at them, or to support them and mad at someone else in order to get clicks, to get views, to get listens, whatever. Guys, don't fall for it. Why would you pretend that a lot of the people that I've named aren't important? And they are shaping different people's views. One of the ones that a lot of people have called out throughout the years is J.D. from New York. And they want to say, oh, he, he hates this, he hates that, he rants and raves about this, he's, you know, getting paid by AEW, blah, 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 blah. Well, let me tell you something. Jerry, the guy behind... JD from New York, watch him as an announcer 
on House of Glory shows. You're going to get a completely different side of him. You're going to hear a commentator who has knowledge, who is playing a role in that promotion, and in that, he is nothing like his character, and I'm using that word on purpose, his character, J.D. from New York. Some of these guys are playing characters. So, don't get caught up in them sniping at each other, trying to badmouth each other. Guys, sometimes their personal feelings outrules how they should act as a professional. And I think we also saw that again with CM Punk in the AEW media scrum. He allowed some of his personal feelings. He all but admitted he was hurt or he felt put down by um, Hangman Page's response and some of his views about he kind of wanted to learn the business on his own. He didn't want to listen to CM Punk and his experience. So Punk allowed his personal feelings to blow that situation up, and he admitted he wasn't actually professional about how he went about it. Well, when you look at the Billy Body versus Sean Ross Sapp interaction that went on at SummerSlam, guess that's what you were seeing. You were seeing these two guys' personal feelings getting involved and probably outweighing their professionalism. And a lot of you, could, you know, critiqued and, and said, you know, Sean Ross Sapp can never be professional. Billy Body can never be professional. No, these guys can. But after a while, when you get sucked in, to the wrestling community or the internet wrestling community, sometimes it, it does feel like it's personal. And so Sean Ross Sapp trying to discredit Billy Body for like three years now, maybe five, trying to poke holes in his sources, trying to find out who his sources are, trying to not credit him when he breaks stories, all of that has kind of just weared on Billy, and you saw or heard him say, I'm going to get up in his face when I see him. We're going to have it out. I really am going to tell him what I think, blah, 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 blah. So what you saw in Nashville at SummerSlam was Sean Ross Sapp's personal feelings getting hurt, or his pride taking over his professionalism, he literally had friends of his or co-workers of his videoing a moment of him going up to Billy Body with Billy's kid around. Austin's 10 years old. And kind of confronting Billy knowing Billy wasn't going to be able to back up what he had previously said. And what he had said was, you know, I'm going to give him peace of my mind. We're going to get into it. You know, I may hit him. I may take care of this. Sean Ross sat knew that at a public function in the wrestling media, and Billy was there representing wrestling media, Conan's show. Sean Ross Sapp, of course, was there as wrestling media. So they're at this public event. Billy has this 10-year-old kid. Sean knew good and well. There was nothing that Billy was going to be able to do that he had previously said. 
number one, he's here in America and not a citizen. He's from England. He has his child. Billy is smart enough to know if he hauls off and hits Sean Roth Sapp, one of these friends or co-workers or colleagues or whatever of Sean Roth Sapp, number one, has it on, on film. They're making it very obvious that they're taping this. Two, he has now been the aggressor in this. He's going to be arrested. And there's no one around to take care of his kid. So more than likely, Austin, who's 10 years old, let me say that again, is going to go into Child Protective Services in Tennessee. And Billy had to think about that. Now, do I condone, do I agree with all of Billy's views? No. I've said on previous episodes of all. Do I agree with what Sean Ross Sapp did? No. I think I just said why. But, guys, that's what I'm talking about. They want to pretend that other people that are in the media aren't as important as they are. And they kind of say, and some of the fans of these guys say, why should you respect him if he doesn't respect you? Well, I'm sorry, but someone's got to break the cycle. You know, if, if you are always telling me don't respect, you know, Brad Shepard because Brad Shepard doesn't respect you. Well, first of all, Brad Shepard doesn't even know me, doesn't care to know me. And here's the thing, why do I care what he thinks? Why should Sean Ross, Ross Sapp care what Billy Body thinks? Why should Billy Body care what Sean Ross Sapp thinks? Guys, you shouldn't. You don't have to volley every insult that is served to you. Some of them, just let them go. Absolutely, just let them go. Because a lot of times we're acting out of anger and here's the thing. I have no idea about statistics. I'm making this statistic up. But if I come on here and say, Billy Body is 85% wrong, and I give you different examples, two or three, I may convince you that Billy Body is 85% wrong. But here's the thing. Me saying that doesn't change the facts. All it means is that I took two or three things that maybe he was wrong on, and I convinced you that he was 85% wrong. Well, guys, I've listened to Billy Body long enough. He's not. He's not 85% wrong. But if you pick and choose parts of sentences or some of his predictions, his sources or whatever, and you narrow it down to two or three, yeah, I probably could convince you of that. It's the same thing. I got to see this weekend the kind of new guy to the blog, um, Zero News, um, that's X-E-R-O News, this guy has, kind of came from nowhere, he has legitimate sources, he has good sources, and he's tweeting out Well, they're going to bring this person back. They're going to bring that person back. Um, Here's where they're going with this. And 
he got, I don't know, I'm guessing, 20 things right. Well, when he did, people jumped on that bandwagon. And what happened at SummerSlam and his predictions with that just skyrocketed him. So between SummerSlam, Clash of the Castle, there was four or five weeks. And you, if you go back throughout those five weeks, and you see how things are progressing in the build up to the Clash, you can see the people that are telling this Zero News things, the storylines are changing or people are getting fired, people are getting rehired, people are getting brought in. When you go back and look at four weeks as a whole, you're seeing that he's giving you this progression. And if you take a month of Brad Shepard or a month of Billy Bobby or a month of Sean Ross Sapp, a month of Andrew Zarian, a month of Dave Metzler, you'll see that in all of them. Because, guys, we just had Clash of the Castle. We just had Monday Night Raw. I can say a whole bunch of stuff that I heard at Clash of the Castle, that I heard about Raw, that I heard this, I heard that. If you look at it, the weekend of Extreme Rules, October 8th, you're going to say, well, pro wrestling overtime was completely wrong. Well, yeah, because we're a month away. So that's what a lot of people were doing was this new guy on the block, the Zero News, they were going back a month and saying, you said Bray Wyatt was coming back. He was going to interfere in the Roman Drew match. Well, did he tweet that out? Well, he hinted at it. Um, he said he was coming back. And so... At Clash of the Castle, obviously Bray Wyatt did not come back. He didn't come back on Monday Night Raw. People have been giving this guy shit all weekend long. Well, like I said, read the progression. He also talked about Karrion Cross coming back and Karrion Cross possibly getting involved in that main event. People took that as it was going to be a triple threat, that Karen Cross was going to interfere. No, you saw Karen Cross at that main event. You saw Drew interact with him. That was planting seeds, and that's what Triple H does. So what I guess what I'm saying is, people, if you are trying to convince people or persuade people to your point of view against someone else, you can do that if you pick and choose two or three different things that they were wrong about. But you've got to look at their body of work kind of overall. And I kind of believe that I know what I do. I know how I do it. I know why I do it. And even though someone else may influence you to believe a certain thing about me, I still know what's true in my work. It doesn't change the facts. And that's where I'm going with. You have to look at long-term. Yes, if you pick or choose two or three things that Billy Bobby has gotten wrong, you can tell people, oh, he's awful, he sucks, he's never right. 
But if you look at the overall that he's been doing for three years, or five years, six years, he's pretty much right. Same thing, Sean Ross said. You know, a lot of times before, I would say six months ago, Sean Ross Sapp was giving you a rundown of what was going to happen on Raw at like 4 o'clock for an 8 o'clock show. Well, what people were doing were, he may list 10, 12 things. And 8 out of 10 of those would be perfect. They would be in the correct order. The finishes would be right. Who was in the matches were completely right. But the two that Sean Rouse sat got wrong, or they changed, or that they moved, maybe from the fourth spot to the seventh spot, people were taking that information and just killing Sean Ross Sapp with it. So notice now, Sean Ross Sapp is not putting that out at four for an eight o'clock show. He's putting it out at like 7.15. 7.30. There are times he's putting it out at 7.45. He's doing it behind his payroll wall. And the reason why is because the closer you get to 8 o'clock, the more likely you are to be right. Do I want it at 7.45? No. I want the 4 o'clock one. I want the noon one. Why? Because as a fan, or as a podcaster, or a social media person, that shows me how things have changed. It doesn't prove Sean Rouse Sapp is wrong. It may have been right at 4.08 when Sean Rouse Sapp posted that. They changed it, maybe... Um, They decided, instead of it going seven minutes, they want this promo to go 20 minutes. Well, they don't want to put it in the ninth slot because they don't want to use 20 minutes there. They want to put it in the second spot so that they can keep viewers or, or whatever reason WWE or AEW, you know, gets. I want to know how that changed, why that changed. Uh, what went on? Why um, CM Punk was in, you know, maybe the fifth segment of AEW on this rundown at 3.15, and why when I watched the show, he's opening it? What changed? Was it because maybe a talent didn't want to do the storyline in segment two of that 315 rundown. So they moved them to the, the, you know, ninth segment of the night and had to replace it and move Punk up. That's the stories I want to hear. A lot of times we don't hear those stories, though, until Conrad Thompson sits down, does a podcast with them 15 years in the future. You know, I've said that before. I absolutely cannot wait for five years from now when Edge is doing his own podcast or he's sitting down with someone like John Alba or or Conrad Thompson and he's telling the story of Judgment Day and the real reason why he left Judgment Day and... What is the real reason that he and Beth Phoenix didn't take on, you know, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest at whatever pay-per-view? I can't wait to hear that story. I've also said to people, I can't wait till 10 years from now. Maybe 7, but more likely 10. When whoever the podcaster is or interviewer or streamer or 
whatever's big ten years from now, sits down with Bailey, and we hear the real story of 2019, where her and Sasha, you know, in the hotel hallway, crying, screaming, and banging on the walls, because they lost their titles. I really want to hear that story. I want to hear the story of her injury on July 7th, 2021, and of that wrestler that accidentally, yes, those are finger quotes, uh, clipped Bailey in a mandatory practice that caused her to have reconstructive ACL surgery. Not normal ACL surgery, reconstructive surgery that kept her out a year. Was that injury actually a year, or was she ready in March and could have performed possibly on WrestleMania, but she didn't meet the deadline, so Vince decided to leave her off of it. And why she was left off every pay-per-view after that, until Triple H took over, and she was brought back in tremendous fight, uh, fashion at SummerSlam. And how she convinced Triple H to allow her to create her own team, basically. And I think we're going to change women's wrestling in WWE. Are we going to get that story now? No. Do some of the guys that you listen to know that story? Yeah, there's not a doubt in my mind. They're just out of respect, out of not knowing the complete story, not going to tell it. But I can't wait for Bailey herself to tell it, like I said, in like 10 years. When she's talking to some podcaster or streamer or um, she's got a show of her own or whatever she's doing. And she feels like it's time to tell this story. It's time to tell my side of it. Same thing with CM Punk and, and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and, and Colt Cabana and all of the people that were involved in AEW this weekend. Eventually, you know, two years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, ten years from now, they're going to tell their side. They're going to tell, you know, their perspective. We're going to get everyone else's perspective. And then someone is going to sit down and make sense of it and be able to tell us really, truly, what happened this weekend. And I can't wait. So that's the thing. Guys, we all need to really step back. And know that there are people out there trying to influence you, trying to color your perception for one reason or another. Some are doing it honestly, innocently. They don't know. They've only got one side of the story. They don't realize that they're getting worked. They don't realize that, you know, maybe they're talking to a person who's fell down the line. They used to be, you know, maybe the number six guy in charge, and now they're like 20th in charge, and they're getting ready to get fired. Um, Then you have some that are influencing you because they have personal feelings. They're not being professional. They're trying to turn you against someone to get their numbers down, to get you not to listen to them. And to listen to them. So that's why I dipped out. I listen to all these guys. Do I listen every single time within an hour of them putting something out? No. I may binge these guys um, three, four, five episodes one afternoon while I'm driving somewhere. And so I think you really need to step back 
kind of dip out a little bit on some of these guys, step back, look around, and I encourage you fans, and I don't mean this harsh, because a lot of people when they say these words, they're insulting you. I'm not. Sometimes you need to step back and you need to get a life. Don't live on Reddit. Don't live on Twitter. Don't be trying to get every single piece of information that you can about every single topic. There are, you know, fans that will try to talk to me for seven hours straight about the thing about Bray Wyatt, and I'm like, dude, this is not my full-time job, I have a life, I do other things, I can't talk to you eight hours straight about Bray Wyatt, I don't care that much, and number two, I don't know you, you don't know me, Number three, you're not my friend. Can I talk to a friend of mine for six hours about a topic? Yeah, maybe. You? No. It's not that damn important. Guys, take a step back. This is professional wrestling. This is entertainment. This is a TV show or a business or a promotion. Guys, I am coming back to give you my views, my thoughts, my analysis, and what I believe to be true about different aspects of professional wrestling. But here's the thing. If you don't like it, you don't agree, I don't care. I'm not in this to uh, influence you. I'm doing this basically more for myself to get down where I stand and what I know and what I believe for future reference. And so, guys, we can't lose sight that this is a TV show that's supposed to entertain us. This is a promotion that is supposed to give us a series of shows that's going to entertain us. So I'm going to tell you right now, if for the next month, for the next six months, for the next year, for the next five years, if I'm wrong about certain shows, but I still enjoy it, then pro wrestling is doing its job, that promotion is doing its job, that wrestler is doing its job. Because here's the thing, guys. Pro wrestling, after all, is about the con. It's about the swerve. It's about making you believe or about making you feel a certain way, a certain thing. So giving you information misdirecting you in a certain way in order to surprise you, in order to tell a story, in order to get you to feel, guys, that's their job. And if they do that, then they've succeeded. If I can tell you, blow by blow, minute by minute, about a match, then I really haven't did anything extraordinary. However, if I can do that, then the wrestling promotion maybe 
didn't do their job. Because they didn't con me. They didn't swerve me. They didn't make me feel something that I wasn't expecting to feel. So guys, you know, I'm back. But I hope that I'm going to be giving you a different outlook. And be a little bit more precise. Maybe that's a good word with my analysis and how I view things. But anyway, that's where I stand on, you know, all of these guys, these, I don't know, 10 to 15 guys that are players in the wrestling business trying to get you swayed on one side or another or to get you slanted, not only to not like this other person, but maybe not even to like this wrestler or this, you know, TV show or even this whole entire promotion. I really encourage you fans to step back, see where are they getting their information and why are they putting it out. There really are some podcasters that only like AEW and will slant everything towards them. There really are some people that only like WWE and believe their way is the best way, so they will slant their news, their information, their spoilers that way to get you to like what they like. All I'm saying is just realize that. I think you'll enjoy wrestling more overall if you do that. If you're not afraid to go watch a a GCW show. You're not afraid to flip on and watch a House of Glory show. That you're in the Midwest and you're not afraid to go to a warrior wrestling show. Sometimes that gets you to see the basics. So that's hopefully what I'm going to be doing from here on out. I'm going to be getting back to the basics in my analysis and in my views and in my opinions and my thoughts and actually stopping and telling you where I'm coming from. At least that's the plan right now. Guys, I have missed you. You know, you can always hit me up at Pro Overtime. That's two O's, Pro Overtime. You can write me at ProWrestlingOT at gmail.com and give me your thoughts, your views, all your uh, protests, telling me all your problems and giving me all your questions and your answers, your views, your opinions. Anyway, I'll be talking to you soon, and hopefully I'll see you somewhere down the road.